Fine. Um, so we, we have this uh, three uh, learning objectives. Um, so we are going to understand how to fit a geostatistical model to predict malaria prevalence in the Gambia. And we use uh, this SPDE, which are the stochastic partial differential equation approach, and the R in the package. Uh, so we fit the model. Then, uh, second uh, uh, learning objective is how to create a triangulated mesh. And this we already uh, did it last week. So we saw the mesh, uh, what was it? And now we apply it uh, in the Gambia. So we do a projection matrix and uh, the data stack to fit the model. Then we finally uh, learn how to manipulate the results to obtain the malaria prevalence predictions and the 95 credible uh, intervals denoting uncertainty. So basically we focus on some areas and then we set a threshold uh, to uh, see what is the prevalence of malaria in that area, setting a threshold, okay, of like 20% or something. So basically, okay, the, the data uh, are in this package, GOR, which is also very interesting and useful. So I suggest you to have a look at the package. These are the data, uh, the Gambia. So we have uh, this X and Y uh, column, which are the uh, UTM, yeah, uh, uh, coordinates. Basically, they are, um, the north and the east, uh, the, so the, the distance in meters from the north and from the equator. Okay, so basically, you the, this is um, they're not they're not latitude and longitude, but they are meters. So you basically set a point, a central point to start, so a zone in the world, okay? You, you are in a specific zone, and then you calculate, consider the meter distances uh, for the longitude uh, by the north and for the latitude by the equator to identify some uh, points within a, an area. And this is done because it lets basically to be more precise about the location. Do you correct me if I'm wrong, saying wrong? Um, uh, so this is why um, sometimes this um, alternative uh, coordinate system is used. Okay. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Yeah. U UTM is a common. Uh, um, projected system when you want to be in a, in a flat surface. Uh, UTM stands for Universal Transverse Marketer. And yeah, it's in meters. It was developed, I think, for by the American Army. And it's very precise, uh, just like you can switch zones. So you really need to not, so you need like to notify like which zone because like you divide the group. I think it's 60 UTM. And, uh, it's bad for like the, um, the the pool you shouldn't choose them for that but outside of it i think it's good and gambia i think fits well the, the it's well localized for utm i think yeah so, yeah. But, so yeah. Ba basically because they are little villages so they are very concentrated in some small areas so they have decided to use this utm um, uh, system uh, because it lets to be more, a little bit more precise about the locations, basically. But then we, we, we transform it into longitude and latitude. Okay, so this is the data set. Uh, we have 2,035 observations and eight uh, um, variables. Uh, so basically, uh, there is the, the age. And so, so the... Mm, uh, various uh, informations uh, which are not uh, this is treated not treated uh, um, but we, we basically focus on uh, uh, the, um, uh, the the coordinates and uh, uh, if there's um, 
case of malaria or not within this, uh, these children. Uh, so the analysis is done at the village level. So basically what's happened here that if we uh, count, uh, I use data diverse, okay? If we count X and Y, these two, uh, the, the UTM marketers, uh, we realize that some location repeats themselves, okay? So this means that this is a village. This is another village, little villages, okay? So uh, we can res uh, restrict our analysis to the villages. So and see within uh, this area, how many cases are identified, okay? So um, how do we do this? Uh, as I said, if I do count, so grouping by the location, uh, I see that now I have 65 observation, okay? Um, and uh, so I, I, um, the, the, the order basically transform the Gambia data set into a new data set um, focalized on villages. No? And to do that, we grouping by the uh, X and Y and then summarize. So basically these are the N, so the number of cases, the, this column here, okay? So this is the N and then we, we sum the, the positive cases. This is positive, so these are the positive cases. So you have one positive cases, zero positive cases. So for each village, we sum the positive, the number of one, the positive cases, and then we calculate the prevalence of malaria, uh, dividing the positive cases divided by total. Okay, uh, so we have a new uh, data set to use. And then what we do now is transforming the coordinates. I didn't use these two packages. Uh, which they do this. Instead, I've used just a simple feature. And uh, I did a spatial point as a simple feature where to the chords, which are the first two columns of the data set, and then they are UTM type of projections, uh, and Gambia is identified in zone 28. Okay, so this is the result of the, the, the first modification. Okay, we now have a geometry and inside the UTM marketers still not transformed. We have just identified them and put uh, inside a geometry. Then we transform with ST transform, setting the uh, coordinate reference system to WGS84 as a longitude and latitude. Lo yeah. Yeah, just one point. It, it's all good, uh, Federica. Just be careful. Like what you are using, it's what we call proj for string. So you are using like k uh, on proj uh, or proj string data. Yeah. And at one point, it will be maybe not compatible anymore. Okay. I do not know when. Probably like in two years and three years, we'll okay. just use like the uh, the the wkt way of uh, storing. Um, coordinate system. No, it works, so no worries. But okay. at one point, be careful, it could be like duplicated. Uh -huh. But okay. it, it's for later, so do not mind too much. <laughs> and not now, just later. But it's all good. Okay, so basically the next step is to transform this, and now we have a geometry, but with longitude and latitude. Okay. Then what we need to do is uh, uh, retrieve the coordinates. So basically pull out this value from the geometry and have uh, uh, like two columns with latitude and longitude. To do this, uh, we, we use ST coordinates and then bind calls on D. So uh, uh, we put all together. 
I renamed uh, the two columns created with longitude and latitude and name it differently because otherwise uh, uh, something can happen so I need to do everything back so I used to do this so this is the result so these are the longitude and latitude and these are the x and y UTM and uh, original columns any questions all good okay so to make a map we use lilef and virides for the color i'm not used to this function but uh, so i didn't spend much time on this so this is to set the colors of the map so basically they specify the cut uh, so the, the viridis colors regular viridis colors are uh, um, specified as some uh, specific uh, percentages okay so a bit more like um, define uh, differently so to, to, to have them slightly use so basically okay so we make a little flat map adding the provider tiles and uh, they use this but there's many you can do different this is good because you can see uh, this color uh, lets you quite understand the uh, the other countries around and where are the cases located um, and see like the these things uh, so the the the, the other uh, the, the, the other countries around the Gambia. Okay, so uh, add circles and these are the points with longitude and latitude. You need to use this tilde, otherwise, uh, gets a bit of like confused. Mm, and these are the colors the legend and the bar okay which is this is the legend and this is the bar this is to set the scale and set this distance this segment here is 50 kilometers which is basically 30 miles uh, and just to give you an idea uh, of what's happening basically uh, to, to to give a unit measure and these are uh, this is the legend so you have this yellow points which are the highest uh, level of prevalence um, and, and you find it just here in this location while this this purplish values are the lowest uh, prevalence uh, locations these are all villages. It's not the whole Gambia, but are specific villages where these cases are uh, located. Okay, so now we are, uh, th this is what's happening. Okay, and this is interesting because we basically, it's a, uh, uh, we have restricted our uh, investigation onto villages. So we have manipulated the data set, making like grouping to uh, specific interests, which are in this case the villages, not the whole uh, entire. Okay, so now what's happened here is that uh, with raster package, we can retrieve the data with this function, and it says that it's going to be removed in a future vers version of raster but uh, it's still uh, now, now it's still we did it so uh, so we retrieve some uh, data uh, for Ga the gambia and it is a raster layer okay raster layer with many pixels 
of the of the Gambia. So it gives you a little bit more uh, an idea of the structure of the territory. Uh, here again uh, is a specification of the colors with the VDDs packages and uh, some some other values. So we make a new map again with a leaflet, add providers uh, the same as before, but now we add the raster. So this is this R. It's our raster layer, which has. Uh, I don't know if you want to add uh, some information, some some I don't know add things. Within a raster layer, there is a resolution, uh, the dimension, um, some like a box, the extension of the locations, the coordinate reference system, and uh, some. What is this exactly? Do you know? Yeah. Just yes, the value of the um, the value of each cell. Uh. And you have like the minimum minimum value of the cell of the raster is minus two, and the maximum is sixty three. Okay. Yep. And for the deprecated message, like raster is, is will not be maintained in the future. It will be replaced by uh, Terra also Terra okay. package. That that the, exactly the same maintainers. Uh, this is just a, a rewrite of so instead of having like raster, you will get Terra. Uh, and I do not think like I do not remember which kind of the name of the function will be like in the the Terra package, but we'll see that in the Joe computation with our uh, book club letters. <laughs> <laughs> but do not be worried. A lot of code are still in raster anyway. Yeah. So again, we we add a legend, a scale bar, and this is the result. So basically now, um, we we don't have the cases because then we add the cases. altitude. So it's in the Gambia region, I did go from minus two to 63. Okay, yeah. So uh, we with this raster layers, we have information about the territory. So in this case, a specific information about the, the altitude. So this is uh, because cases, uh, highest prevalence was here. Uh, just to investigate if the like the territory like uh, can be like influencing um, the spread of cases. So anyway, uh, let's go forward. So what's happened now is that from uh, uh, this raster R, we extract, we use this function extract. I've tried with dplyr, uh, tidyverse, doesn't work. Uh, so basically, we extract the location uh, from our data set. Uh, so basically, we attempt to uh, see, uh, yes, extract the location. Okay. So the result is this. We now have a D2. I name it differently again. Uh, extract will be the same in, um, in, um, in Terra. So if you use the new package, I, this is the na same name. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, the same function, get data. It's, it's not, maybe not the same function, but it's the, the same name of the function. I do not know if the function has been changed internally, but um, yeah, I think it's the extract is the same. If you use extract, uh, will work the same. Yeah, okay. Okay, we are here. Um, so this is the altitude, and uh, uh, that was the the result. So you are adding to the point of village the altitude. Mm -hmm. Got it. I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm. 
Now, uh, we need to model before to, uh, I was looking at this, uh, where is this the other, okay. Before to uh, uh, put the points that we uh, found, okay, the cases that we found as a point uh, within the villages, we now attempt um, to model uh, this value, okay, to predict the prevalence of malaria uh, in this location. So we use this SPDE approach, okay, uh, and the inlet package, as I said. So we set a binomial, our response variable, okay, uh, depend by uh, the predictors, so the cases, so the, post, the, the prior and the posterior. Um, basically, our response variable, so the, the, uh, the, the, the prevalence uh, of cases depends by the number of cases, okay? So the probability of, of these cases. And we've hypothesized that they are uh, behaving as a binomial. Okay, so it's a binomial of these parameters, mean and standard deviation. This this is, should be mean and standard deviation. No, it's it's a binomial, so it's the number of cases and the probability. Yeah. Okay. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah number yeah. of cases and probability in binomial. So it's not it's not the normal one. So n is the numbers. Like, and P is like uh, the number of, you know, like the number of uh, flipping coins, I will call that that. And P is the probability of, let's say, if, oh, okay. if, yeah, you, are, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you are flipping coin with uh, a fair coin, it will be, and you flip it 10 times, it will be 10, uh, comma, point, point 0.5. Yeah. And if that's it. And okay. then you, you, are, you are defining the probability after, okay. Yeah, the, the, the model will be a logic um, uh, of P, of this uh, prob the probability of the cases. Uh, we have um, an intercept and uh, um, a coefficients of the altitude, coefficients of the altitude, and then this is the... Uh, the um, Special uh, effects. As Okay, yeah. The, the special random effects. The random effect, yeah, the special random, special random, random effect. And then we use the covariance uh, within this uh, random effect. Okay. So this is the uh, Bessel function that is, is used inside to calculate the covariance, as well as the V which is the smoother parameters and the row. I don't know if you pronounce it row. This is, uh, yeah, the distance where the spatial correlation is close to 0.1. So th these are, I didn't specify the, the formula, but if we go back to the chapter, to the chapter, Uh, there is a, um, like a bit more like specification. Facilitate, I think. I think that uh, we missed this, uh, this bit, graph. I don't know why. It's better after, after, after. Yeah. Ah, okay. okay. So this is the, um, the formula. So basically, um uh, this is the, the covariance okay yeah, yeah. so the distance yeah, the, the, the points the, uh, uh the variance of the distance within points or something like so yeah this is this is like a, a matern covariance function it's take like the total the, the basic variance divided by um something that's gamma gamma is like uh, n minus one factorial it's just the difference, I should say, and I think KV is like, you know, uh, you want to model like how fast the covariance uh, is dropping, 
Oh. Is it dropping like that or is it dropping like that? And this is what these terms mean. And this was the smoothness. And after like these raw parameters, it's like because like at one point you will always have variance, but uh, you assume like at this point you are reaching like the the still the plateau. So yeah, mm -hmm. but it's difficult to understand. Yeah. Um... But because sometimes you do in theory and you get lost inside the, the formula, so you do the, all the things, eh? and then you, you are not attached to the practic practice and see what's happening. So now uh, we have an idea for this theory, uh, the, the formulation, are, uh, this one here, so we know about what, what is a covariance and what is a binomial, what is a, a model function, etc. And now we ap uh, apply uh, this formula in practice, uh, and we use the INLA package to, to do modeling, which will help us calculating all these things, basically. So, uh, first things, we bind these two columns in a separate um, data frame to use it, uh, named COO for the coordinates. Uh, and then we put inside this in la mesh today. Okay. Uh, where the location is the coordinates. And then we specify the maximum age and the cutoff. The, you know. Uh, yeah, it will be in degrees. So here, yeah, like we are, like I think this will because like it will be in degrees. We are now like in uh, latitude, longitude. So we are building a mesh that will be like in degree. Uh, that will be like in degrees. So that's why this is small value, I think. Uh, the number of vertex are uh, six hundred seventy-three, and we. I ask myself why I should use. It, why, how, how can I do this without using plot function and with ggplot? Let I do not know, Federica. Uh, I let, uh, <laughs> this is, you are the ggplot expert, but I think like uh, <laughs> this, this object is like a graph. So I think you should use ggGraph. I think like uh, in the gg, uh, you have to check in the, um, I think this is, this. This count as a graph. I'm not sure. You should. We should check. But I think like it should be converted as a graph, and then you can use the the tool to plot it as a graph in uh, in ggplot. But okay. unsure. I could be wrong. No, no. I, I can't tell you. <laughs> if I if I have a minute, I'll try that. Yeah. So basically, it releases a constrained refined Delaunay triangulation. Okay. Uh, with plot mesh, and then we add these points in the coordinates that we we set. And these are the points. This is the, so basically, it's a larger area uh, to give an idea uh, if there's any pattern recognition of the cases. Maybe is that right? Well, okay, let's go forward. So uh, using this stochastic partial differential equation, okay, we build a smoother parameter. And this is alpha. Okay, so we use D plus D, sorry, D plus D divided by two, where V is one and D is two. So basically this alpha is two. Okay, and we do this in la spatial uh, uh, stochastic gradient. partial differential equation <laughs> with a matter covariance function. Okay, uh, and there it is. Okay, so this is our stochastic differential equation. Now, what's happened that we use this, uh, we extrapolate, this is um, uh, like 673, 
this value here, uh, I go back to because I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm saying something wrong. So, uh, okay, this value here is 673. We put this inside this function, in la SPDE make index to basically what happens? We extrapolate the numbers of rows, okay, that are needed to identify our cases, okay? Basically, we, we have a data frame, and some points have a cases, some points don't have a case. So we basically want that index of the, the rows uh, to identify that, that, that information. So basically, this way we extrapolate the number, the, the row numbers that we need, and we put them um, afterwards. We use them afterwards to extrapolate the, uh, the the information that we need. Okay, so uh, we then project the matrix. And uh, we build a matrix with this inla make a matrix. This make a it, it is a matrix. We use the mesh. This is a bit complicated to me, but uh, so this is the grid in the location, and so we basically create a matrix of uh, with the location and the grid. Then with this function raster two points from raster in in the raster uh, within the, the, the raster uh, data that we have, we specify the location where to predict the prevalence. Okay, and this is a quite uh, uh, some certain number of uh, observations. Uh, and then we aggregate the raster with fact uh, five and the mean. So this is aggregate, it's not the uh, stats function, but it's from raster. It basically lets you uh, calculate the mean of, uh, of a raster. So we have a new RA. I'm gonna check quickly what fact is, but I think like it's an aggregation on, on Windows, on, on Win moving Windows. Uh, and then uh, we raster two points, which is the same as here. Okay, we, we again um, rasterize our new uh, value. Basically we aggregate uh, the locations. So far, what I understood. Okay, so now uh, we create uh, a new, uh, we identify the columns where the, the location is, uh, okay. and we put, we create a new matrix with these new locations. Okay, yeah. Where is the chat is gone? The yeah, fact is, is, is that is what I said. It's, it's, it's a basically a number of cell in each direction where you are going to like uh, um, take them to aggregate. So let's say like you have like uh, by five, you are taking five on one side and five on one side, you just take them in. Okay. So basically what's happened, uh, this is the best part and we don't have much time because we have like a few minutes. <laughs> so this is the best part. So basically what we do now is stack our estimation to a stack E and uh, so to a stack estimation, stack P, and a stack prediction, stack P, and then put them together into a stack pool. Basically, stack a model to stack a model means, uh, what means? <laughs> means uh, like freezing the model into some uh, specific uh, location and conditions. 
um, so we stack for estimation, we stack for prediction, and then we put them together in a full stack. And we use this in the stack function for the two, the estimation, the prediction, and then we build the, the, the full stack, okay? How can you do the stack? So basically, this is the tag estimation and prediction. But then inside you put the data and you have your uh, positive cases. Uh, and here it's empty. Yeah, to, to my understanding, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but to my understanding, what you're gonna do is like, you have one like to build the model and the other one is like to put data into it. So you are building like the, if you have done a bit of geostatistic with a routine now, what you do is geostatistic is like you define a grid where you will put result of the grid. And I think this is the same idea. Uh -huh. Like you are building like, you know, a point grid where you are gonna like empty one, but you define the size and where you're gonna put result into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's how I understand it, but I could be wrong. Okay. So you, you build this, stack estimation, the stack prediction, and put them together, okay? In the stack, in the stack, in the stack. Okay. You have the effect and everything. So now we model things. This is the formula that we use. So basically, we don't have an intercept. We put the intercept to zero. Uh, so in a way that we use all the information that we got. Okay, so uh, this is our formula. So we consider uh, the cases, the altitude, and then uh, our um, uh, interaction effect. Like let's, let's say it's not an interaction effect, but it's a, it's a modern uh, transformation that we use with this, this um, differential equation. Like when, when you use these uh, this splines and everything, okay? So you basically, um, this is a type of formula. Okay, so this is what's happened. This is the function INLA, and this is the function control predictor. Okay, this is where the, the, the issue should be raised. Basically, if you run this, this is the result. This is the model, okay? You use the function illa. If, if I want to, so we had a look at this function before, but uh, basically this function uh, is, is the main function that we use for making Bayesian analysis, okay? Yeah, it, it's full of stuff like it. <laughs> exactly. So here, what we use is the formula. We specify that it's a binomial. This is n trials, number of trials. And then we have a control family and a control predictor. Predictor, okay. And here are the data of, uh, that we use inside our model. Okay, they are stacked. Yeah. Estimation and predictor, basically we put inside our in la function, our stack pool. And so we have this control family, which is the logit, and then we have the control predictor. Inside the control predictor, we have, when, when you do compute true, here, if I do, because I wasn't uh, basically able to find the marginals, okay? Yeah, I think we are, I think we had the issue before, like I'm trying to remember and think where it was, but I think I had to add something into it to add yeah, the yeah. marginal. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. searching for it and yeah, when I found it, I will like. I did it, I did it, I'll show you, I'll show you. Okay, so this is our first model and yeah. we do not have the marginals this way, okay? But we use it for, for something else. So this is the summary yeah. of the model. Complicated. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is the uh, beta zero and the altitude. Small so effect. Yeah. Uh, 
you can see that the result says that the yeah. the altitude influence it's an, a negative has a negative influence on the cases okay uh, and then if you go back there down da, 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 you have the marginal lag likelihood and then it says posteriors marginal needs also this control compute list so yeah. if i don't put if I don't put this inside the ILA function, I do not have the margin. Yes, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And but... the nice, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, but now we do we do this later. Yeah. What's happened is then um, we map in the, the prevalence uh, using this uh, uh, stack index again for retrieving the number of rows that we need. So we have the index, which are just num a list of numbers, okay, yep. uh, the, the number of rows. And we uh, put this index inside this res, which are our results, okay? So we have this uh, uh, res, which is our model. Yeah, the, re the result of the model. This, this one here. Uh, if I do res, uh, dollar sign. I have a list of things, okay. But not the marginal. The, yeah, yeah. The, exactly. If I uh, this this comes later, okay. So here we, we have already said that we don't have the margin. In fact, if yeah. I do, I have some. But it's values. Uh, it's null. Yeah. Okay. But now we we calculate them later. So for now, we need this uh, summary fitted values, uh, and this is there, okay? I don't do this because otherwise it's yeah. uh, put a list of things that uh, it's quite difficult, but uh, uh, you basically, within this number, rows numbers, uh, you calculate the mean, uh, and then the 25% and the, so, I think you do not calculate, you just get them. They are here, like uh, as a column, and you just want this column exactly. to simplify it, I think. Yeah, yeah, you extrapolate the mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you extrapolate the mean, extrapolate the 25th quantile, and the 97th quantile. So this is prevalence, uh, um, minimum, no. maximum. Okay, so then colors and a map. Okay, this is. Uh, now what's happening here is yeah. map. Oh. So it's cool. It's loading a bit. <laughs> okay, this is very cool. Uh, it's a grid of points, yeah. but this grid is colored. So yeah. basically you can see again that th this is like spread a bit. To let you understand that you might have uh, this is the uh, the greatest prevalence of cases within this this location for example and now you see that uh it, it draw an area which is likely little little larger so like can spread around nice very nice okay so we have a grid. We rasterize to see uh, to see it in, in within the territory. Better. This is in the territory, altitude and prevalence. You see that these are the cases. They might be here as well. We have some cases there. And so, okay. Now, um, here is um, the mean. Uh, hmm. And now you. Lower. Lower 
and you have this case. So let, let's go back. I mean, it's, uh, okay. lower level. This is the lower level. I don't understand. So we can follow the same approach to create maps with the lower and, and upper limits. Lower, lower limits of the boundary. So we have like before we had the mean, now we have like the low level of the prediction and the upper level, the 95 percent inter uh, confidence interval. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is this is gone. Yeah, we should that we should that the locate me button. Okay, but anyway, let, yeah, that's let's, fine. No worries. Yeah, yeah. Let, let let's go uh, forward to the the last uh, the last bit and see. Uh, okay, this is the opposite. Yeah, upper level. Uh, and so this is what's happened. Now, what we want to do is basically uh calculate the um what the, the prevalence of of cases uh fixing a cutoff so cases that are greater than 20 percent for, for yeah. example in a given threshold okay so the um this is the formula and now you cannot see it but okay so this is basically the formula. Uh, this is the probability that must be greater than, tw than C, and C is the 20%, okay? So now I show you that uh, I've taken this from the chapter because I couldn't run the things, but then I did it, and I uh, achieved, a, so I found the slide with different results. So once the marginal are found, the probability that malaria prevalence exceed the 20% at this location is like 69.3%, uh, okay? How to calculate the marginal? So to calculate the marginal, I need to specify this control compute. Okay, you have yep. family. Yeah. Predictors and computes. Okay. So I do, I, I run this rest too, and now, again, extrapolate the index, the number of rows, and use this formula, one minus in the marginal. Now I have the marginal. Okay. If I do this, I don't do, because it's, yeah. that's, that's a, it's a list of, uh, long, uh, it's a long list. But uh, now we have the marginals. If I run it, you can see that the, the, the value is like yeah. the same. Yeah, about the same. Uh, and then you uh, they S apply this value to the formula. Yeah, you're gonna apply all the all of it of all the row. I mean all the um, not the row the the yeah the um, you have the, this, uh, this. Oh, okay. So you have like the interval of it. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Cool. And then finally, you rasterize and plot it in your uh, leaflet. And you can see hmm. that it can spread a lot. Yeah, so if we think like the malaria risk is 20%, it tells us like where where it could happen. Uh, That's cool. Greater than 20% here. And we, we haven't had much in this area. And now it's quite, yeah. Yeah, it's normal because like the, the level is lower. The probability is at twenty percent, like so. The prevalence rate is low, but you maybe you with malaria you want to know, like you know, quickly. Mm -hmm. You want to act with a low prevalence rate. I don't know. I'm not an expert, but I assume it makes sense. Well, anyway, this is. Uh, no, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks. 
but yeah, I think like they changed it, like, you know, like these compute uh, predictors, it used to be like in one side and now it's on the other side. So I guess now we're good. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks a lot, Federica. It was good. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I do not know how to, um, because, you know, like for the mesh, they probably implemented a method for plots that's not implemented in the ggplot, but I think it's a graph, so we, we sh you should check that. Uh, next week, do we have someone? Uh, yeah, no one. Alua Femi, is it your turn or is it mine? <laughs> I think it's your turn. <laughs> it's my turn? Okay. So let's, let, let's, ne ne uh, next week it's me. Are we good? Wow. Well, see you next week. Thank you. And it was a good presentation for the guests. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. 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 -bye.